Well, you can see I've got the uh, gearbox off of this. I really did not want to rebuild this gearbox because these things evidently are about as challenging as the entire radio. But I ran into a problem which may be my biggest problem yet. This main tuning shaft and actually let me pull it out here if I can get it out. Uh, it won't come out but this is a concentric shaft. I don't know if you can see the little shaft in the middle going in and out. It's attached to this flywheel back here. And when I got it, it had this little piece of quarter inch brass on the end with this sheet metal or wood screw holding it on. So the problem was you turn the knob and nothing happens. Well, it turns out this is a uh, this is a clutch driven. I don't know if we can see this on camera or not, but um, on the back side here, you can see that I call it a pressure washer. That keeps pressure. You put the knob on the front. And then this flywheel actually screws on this little shaft and you can adjust the pressure that's on it. That puts pressure between the knob and this outer shaft. And the outer shaft is the one that tunes the uh, condensers. You can see it turning. So it's a clutch so you can spin the dial real fast. When it gets to the end, it'll slip. It seems what's happened here, and I can't get a straight answer. I've gone on all of the Halicraft reflectors and all, and I haven't gotten an answer exactly how these things are put together. But it looks like that this inner shaft was actually broken off right there at the edge of the outer shaft. And somebody screwed this little piece of brass, quarter inch brass on the end to hold the knob thinking that would solve the problem. But it just spins and that doesn't solve the problem. So I've also been hunting on all the websites trying to find somebody that's got a shaft that they'll sell me. So far no, no luck. So I had to take it off anyway. I'm going to have to do something about this shaft. And I've got some ideas of what I can do short of finding one. And while I've got it out, I'd just well go ahead and disassemble this thing. Uh, there's a real good website. I think the guy's name is uh, Doug Moore. Let me see. I've got the article right here. Um... Yes, Doug Moore, KB9DY, TMY. It's on uh, Phil's old radio's website, Radio Wrinkles. And it's by Doug Moore, KB9TMY. And it's about, I don't know, 10 pages of instructions to how to rebuild this gearbox, and it's complicated. 11 pages. Um... I actually sent him an email and asked him a question about this shaft, and he responded to me, and uh, he said, uh, what I got from the email was that he's just like me, he's, he's older, he doesn't have, he said he wrote this article many years ago, he doesn't have any SX-28s anymore, and he just didn't remember how this was put together, but it's a great article. I told him in an email back that he did the uh, restoration community a great service by writing that article. So while I've got it out, I'm going to disassemble it, clean it, go by his instructions, and, and try to get it back into shape. Uh, can't be a bad thing. And try to figure out what I do with this broken shaft.
Well, I've disassembled the gearbox. Didn't want to have to do it, but since I had to, I uh, didn't have to, I uh, found out later, but uh, in order to figure out what's going on with that main tuning shaft, I took the gearbox out, and I've got a break in the action here because I'm waiting on some parts, so I figure what the heck. I'll go ahead and tear this thing apart. Uh, this is the uh, back plate, and I have cleaned it up with lacquer thinner. I find lacquer thinner is the best. It gets the grease, gets old cruddy paint, everything off of it. And I'm using uh, this article by uh, Doug Moore. Turns out he did this many years ago, but it's still very useful. It's in a website called Radio Wrinkles. I think if you'd interested in this. It's a step-by-step -step procedure and um, all you got to do is Google SX-28 Gearbox Doug Moore and I'm sure it'll pop up. He also has in there how to restring this um, uh, band spread, read uh, the dial string on it and then there's another website that uh, shows how to restring this dial cord that operates these little pointers. So, um, and that's, I believe, Jim's radio page. I think, once again, if you just Google SX-28 restringing dial cords, you'll find uh, that article with some very good diagrams of how the uh, cord is to be restrung. I won't get into detail on this. It, uh, the article covered it very well. And so far it's not bad. Uh, I think the hard part's going to come when you reassemble it because there's so many little ball bearings that are going to be set in grease in both the top and the bottom. And getting it back together without dislodging some of those I think is going to be a challenge. So we're going to continue on. I uh, did a little different. He he recommends you put all the parts in one jar. I kind of used individual bags for each gear, numbered them, put the bearings that go with each gear in the same bag, and just hope that I don't lose any ball bearings. There's some tiny little bearings in here. So I'm back with this uh, main tuning shaft. This is the inner shaft. And as I have explained before, something's missing here. Something's wrong. I, I posted on the Helicrafters site asking people how this was assembled. I found one photograph, but the photograph is not clear still how this is put together. All I know is that when I got this there was a sheet metal screw screwed in the end of here and this little brass piece where the knob attaches to was on it and it just spins and it can't just spin because then it won't turn the what needs to be turned to be able to tune the radio. So nobody could tell me how this was put together originally so I don't know if something broke off the end of this I, and somebody tried to make a quick fix um, but here's what I did. I had nothing to lose. I It already had a hole and it looked like there were threads inside of there but they were so boogered up from the sheet metal screw that you couldn't do anything with them. So I got me a 440 tap and I tapped that out so that a uh, 440 screw will fit in it. And then I can put that little brass thing on it and screw it to it. Screw it to it. That's poetic. And 
when you look at the picture that I did find of what they look like originally this this looks right however I do need to cut some off of the screw so it'll go in far enough to hold this it's just a tiny bit long but even then the tendency for this little thing to turn is going to be there if you put any pressure on it at all if you look at it you'll see there's a tiny little hole in both sides of this so did they have a pin in it that went through that held it so it wouldn't spin I don't know I tell you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna shorten this screw so it'll hold it good and tight and I'm gonna fill it full of JB weld you know me and JB weld and lacquer thinner I couldn't live without them and I'm gonna screw that thing to it filled with JB weld and let it set up and hope it works I would like to report that um, my fix on this shaft works perfectly. Um, put this knob on. And you can see it turning the gears as it should. And then if something stops the gears, I'll get in a position and hold the camera and do this at the same time. something stops the gears the inner shaft turns inside uh, the outer shaft so the clutching action is working as it's supposed to proud of that I've uh, completed the reassembly of the gearbox um, like everything on an SX-28 not an easy project but I'm glad I did it band spread getting that band spread restrung was not easy getting the tension that I needed to so it wouldn't slip uh, I had to do two or three innovative things which I won't describe but if you do one yours is gonna be different anyway but uh, everything working good now cleaned up greased so it should be ready to operate and um, I have to still restring the mechanism that makes these little pointers go up and down but I can't do that until I mount it back on the radio because these shafts here uh, hold a little uh, device that you got to attach the uh, dial cord to so I can't restring that dial cord until I get it back on the front of the radio. Well, I run into another little problem here. Those of you that have worked on these things will be familiar. The gears in this uh, gearbox that turns these dials, that turns the variable capacitors, they've got a little stop it's just a little bent up piece of metal off of the gear itself on the back and it um, keeps the shaft from rotating uh, past well it stops it on both ends and um, that little piece of metal was broken off of the back of one of my gears when I rebuilt this gearbox and I knew it and I said well you know the variable capacitor will only go so far so that'll stop it but what I didn't realize was or didn't think about was those gears keep turning therefore the dial keeps turning even though the capacitor has stopped turning you gotta have it a little stop on the back of that gear so I made me one out of this piece of metal here and I'm going to JB weld it to the back of that gear. Luckily I can get to it. And that's going to be my stop. Hit that screw. 
I'll have to let it dry a long time. This JB Well, if you really want it to do some heavy duty, you got to let it dry uh, 48 hours or so. And I'm hoping it'll hold because I sure would have to take that gearbox off and redo it. That's a job. Getting that thing apart and well, getting the parts not bad. Getting it put back together is the problem. So I'm going to JB Weld this to the back of the gear and hope this does the trick. I hope I can get a shot of this. Uh, you can see that little piece that I've JB welded to the back of that gear. Got two alligator clips holding it till it dries. You can see that little square hole. Let me get the light open a little better. See that little square hole there? That's where the original tab was. They bend that up, a little piece of metal bend it up and that stop that's the stop hits the screw in there to uh, keep it from rotating past its end points so um, all of you that believe in prayer pray that this will work so now we'll tackle this s meter um, this is another mess this lens on the front you can see it's all warped and yellowed you can't even read through it I took it out of the case and uh, the face is burnt quite a bit darkened quite a bit from that bulb in the back but I think it's probably usable one of the, I'm gonna make me a little plastic lens to put in this this one has a little adjustment on it that you can zero the meter. I don't think I'm going to worry about that because once I zero it, it ought to stay. And if it bothers me, I can always take it out and uh, adjust it. So another major challenge here, getting this usable. I guess I should check it and make sure the movement is working um, before I go any further. I hooked the meter up to a little adjustable DC supply, turned it all the way down to zero, but there's a little bit of residual voltage enough to make that meter read zero, uh, mid, mid scale. But when I ramp up the voltage, the meter does work. And uh, when I disconnect the supply totally, it goes back to zero. So I think the movement is fine. I get started on this cabinet. Um, this thing was painted by somebody in a metallic blue. It has a lot of rusty places on it. Um, it has a real bad rust place there if you can see it. And so I think the best way to do this is to sandblast it. I've got a big pressurized sandblaster, I've got a siphon sandblaster, I've got a sand cabinet, I've got a glass bead cabinet. But I've been wanting to try one of these contraptions that they've been advertising. It's a gun that you attach to your pressure washer and it sucks sand up out of the bag so it mixes sand with water. I just been wanting to try so I got me one. The advantage to this is sandblasting thin metal like this you can warp it uh, because the heat from the sand will warp it so we're going to give this thing a try. You'll uh, find out the same time I do whether it works or not. This thing is working great, working great. <laughs> 